Hi, welcome back to the Mania Sean Experience Podcast. This week, we're bringing you all things Super Bowl and somebody who made a very big announcement and made everybody not interested in Super Bowl anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around, stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Manny and Sean Experience. This is Manny. And I'm Sean. Uh, and together we form the Moss Podcast. No, that's <laughs> no, we're not, we don't do that anymore. Um, it was cute. It was cute. Reminiscing about our the past. past. The past is in the past. So let it go. Um, <laughs> we're here to put on a show for you. I hope you are entertained. Are. I didn't even do my hair for you today. I barely did my hair today. Yeah. You're getting it raw and uncensored, just like J-Lo's new album. <laughs> it's been a day. <laughs> well, welcome back to another episode of the pod. It's episode 65. Yes, it is. Look at you throwing things. <laughs> yes. Look at that. God is good. All the time? <laughs> episode 65. We've hit, we've hit a milestone, I guess. <laughs> Um, how are things in your neck of the, I said that last podcast, how are things in your scope of the world? So you just going to come up with new ways to say we in the same place. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm good. It's been a good week for the most part. Work is work as always. Um, Valentine's just went by. It did. You got me a lovely to lovely gifts i did i surprised plural you, you did because usually we don't give each other yeah. anything if you watched the last episode i said i am not good at, like showing emotion and all that stuff mm -hmm. so i bought him a present because it made me feel like i was providing some some like i still love you <laughs> <laughs> and, and he wasn't expecting it <laughs> true i was not expecting it um even though gift or Whatever. Gift is that love. my love language? Yes. I still appreciated it. Yes. His love language is? Um, touch. <laughs> and um, quality time. Quality time. You can learn and hear more all about that on episode 64, where we answered your relationship questions. It got a little spicy. It did. It was a good conversation. I enjoyed talking with... Corey and Kelsey and answering y'all's questions because y'all gave us some doozies. Um, <laughs> there will be a part two to that eventually. I don't know when, but be on the lookout for that one. Anyway, how are you doing? <laughs> how are things in your neck, neck of, of Africa? Because you keep talking about <laughs> these damn zebras. Go ahead. It's a beautiful picture on my computer. It, it's, is it not? I Look mean, at all the flamingos. Y'all can't see this. The, I don't know why he's talking the about zebras. It's just they're in their natural habitat. They're not at bush gardens. It's just really nice to see. Do them. they even have zebras at bush gardens? Uh, I'm sure there's one somewhere. Yes, in the in the Serengeti uh, in the when you go on the train. Okay. Yeah, or take the sky ride, which is now five dollars. But yeah, everything's good on this in, <laughs> in this hood. Everything's good in this hood. A uh, quick note to everyone, uh, our podcast video has moved exclusively to Spotify. So if you watch this on YouTube and then you're like, oh, fuck, I got to listen to this with no visual, it's because the podcast is now on Spotify. Yeah, we're trying out Spotify for podcasters. And so that is where the videos will go now. Yeah. And as we told you before, we're trying to like, kind of create the two different, you know, wheelhouses that we have. The podcast and then our vlogs, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> We're trying to be like branding people or something. I don't know. Yeah, we just out here doing the best we can. I'm not going to lie to you. We are just doing the best we can. Uh, we appreciate everyone that listens, everyone that watches the vlogs, everyone that watches the podcast videos or listens to it. Um we just do the best we can. That's all we can the do. The best we can. And that's what we're told in life. Do the best you can. Do the best you can. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Don't say that. <laughs> I hate that saying so much because nobody has bootstraps anymore. All right. Well, with all that funness, let's get 
into the mixtape. You're in the mix. <laughs> Welcome back to the mix. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm laughing. Oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> well, the Super Bowl came and went. A thing happened. A people thing played happened. a game. And some people were happy and some people were very sad. Some people were happy and the hearts of the <laughs> San Francisco 49ers were ripped out. Uh, especially because apparently, I read, some members of Team of the 49ers team were not aware of the brand new overtime rules and they literally thought they had won the Super Bowl. Yikes. Yeah, big yikes. If you don't watch football, NFL before, it was like whoever scores first wins wins the game in overtime, which the Super Bowl did. But they recently made a change to where now both teams get an attempt to score. It's like college. It's like college. Thank God, because before it was like it's whoever wins the coin toss. The coin toss. The coin toss. The coin toss. All right, we twisting words today. The, the, the coin, the coin, the little quarter. Every time you know whoever won the quarter toss. Um, in college, it was both teams get an opportunity at the end zone. Which, Which I think is fair. It is fair. Like, I don't understand why it would be the other way where, hey, girl, y'all have possession of the ball. If you score, you win. And the other team doesn't get an opportunity. Like, that doesn't make any sense. It's wild to me. It's like you're just up, up the chance and then you hope your defense doesn't right. allow a score. But anyways, the San Francisco 49ers on the first attempt in overtime kicked the field goal. Uh, some people thought they had won, and Kansas City was like, uh, "Not yet, bitch. <laughs> we get a time. We get to go on the field." And sure enough, um, Patrick Mahomes. I say he were he plays his best football when he is losing, and mm-hmm. when he's using his legs because the boy can run. Yeah, I don't watch football, um, but I do know who Patrick Mahomes is and Travis Kelsey. And Travis Kelsey was very upset when. They weren't playing the way they were supposed to. Oh, he got in the coach's face, y'all. He did. He apologized. There's all kinds of memes about it now. Because, you know, him and his brother have a podcast. And so they talked about it. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he can invite us to his podcast. I wish. Anyway, so the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs are now Super Bowl champions again by winning 25 to 22 in overtime, to which... I was bored most of the game, and I actually like football, but like nothing was happening in the first two halves. But I guess it was a good defense, defensive playing, which in college football would be uh, you played a bad game mm. and then <laughs> not get allowed into the college football playoffs. You know, I mean, like truly, Florida State. <laughs> it was like no one scoring like the first half of the game. Yeah. And it was just like, what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, for our defensive people that really like a lot of defense in game, I, it was I'm great for them. Sure, they enjoyed it. But I like to see points, you know, just more exciting. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that was Super Bowl. Well, the game itself. Uh, you're welcome for that recap. Uh, next year, I want to watch it on Nickelodeon, though. <laughs> Listen, the Nickelodeon commentary was everything. I'm mad that I didn't watch it on Nickelodeon. I, can, can we put a clip into this? And it'll go out of bounds. It'll be third down and just a couple yards to go. And the fun thing there, clock also stops. If you go out of bounds, clock stops. Go out of bounds. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Don't forget that. <laughs> Is there going to be a quiz on this later? I don't know. Yeah, I'm still have decided. I can't tell you because it's supposed to be a pop quiz. If that's the False start is when a non-offensive player illegally moves after lining up for, but prior to the snap. Now they have to go back five yards. Maybe they need a map to find the end zone. Because if you're watching it on video, because <laughs> it was it was hilarious and also sassy and sarcastic. And informational. informational. Bitch, when Dora came up and she was explaining holding, I was like... This is what they should be putting on TV because there are people that don't understand football, right? Like a lot of people watch the Super Bowl because it's the Super Bowl. Right. 
a lot of people watch for the commercials. A lot of people watch because there's a concert in the middle right. of it. Um, but watching the clips on TikTok and YouTube of the Nickelodeon joint, I was like, this would make me watch football all the time. Yeah, and apparently some of the fans in the crowd got a little aggressive <laughs> in terms of players. But <laughs> it was funny. The Dora one was like, that's holding. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I also loved that sometimes SpongeBob or Patrick were being very shady and sarcastic. Yeah, like there was a time the ball fumbled. Yeah. And I think Patrick or SpongeBob were like, that's, that's a fumble. You have to hold the ball. <laughs> Him making fun of Leo DiCaprio only dating 25 year olds. I was like, is this, I, is this for kids? Or I love for this. Is for adults. <laughs> this, the kids get the little bitty. They're here for the <laughs> that. The rest of us are that here for the joke. Really loud. You sound like a sheep or something. <laughs> That's how SpongeBob laughs. It's your voice. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we should definitely watch the Nickelodeon. If you haven't, just do a search on TikTok or Google. <laughs> it's a fun time. It is a fun time. Mm-hmm. And next time, I am going to find the glory. I like them trying to make football interesting for the kids and probably some grown ass adults I because mean, it's a national holiday. When they America. did the Toy Story one, that one was entertaining too. Mm-hmm. Uh, do more of that football NFL. I mean, it, it's a national holiday, <laughs> but we all have to work the next day. Eh. Anyway, we should close. Anyways. <laughs> If you don't care about football and you're like, what two teams were playing? Um, Usher, Usher, Raymond, uh, Usher was the <laughs> halftime performer this year. Um, when you heard Usher was performing, what were your first thoughts? I was like, sure, it makes sense. Um, his residency has been doing really well. Um, he, it was always talking about him serenading somebody and doing some tricks on stage. So I was like, this makes sense. Usher has an extensive catalog. He does. And he puts on a good show. So why not Usher? Yeah, I was just like, cool, Usher. That was my reaction. <laughs> I mean, yes, Usher is a throwback for some people, but Usher has Usher has been working hard. And like, I'm not a fan of some of his newer albums yes more so like the old stuff definitely old school but there is there are some songs in the modern day that i like as well and he just put out an album so like all of this just made sense well mr usher uh brought out jermaine dupree little john Ludacris, alicia keys will i am and her can we talk about jermaine dupree's outfit we can definitely talk about Jermaine Dupri's outfit. What was he thinking? I don't know. He was looking like Matilda up there. See, if he was still with Janet, she would have been like, what are you doing? I, I, what made him want to wear that? Is, 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 I don't know. I don't know. It, it wasn't a good look for him. It was not a good look for him. He looked like an adult that <laughs> enjoys playing like he's still a baby or something. And there's nothing against people that like to do that. We're um, not kink shaming. <laughs> no, I'm not kink shaming, but I'm just like, brah, really? What is this? What, what are you is doing? This? Out of all the people that style you, this is what you went to? <laughs> like those socks look like the ones the little girls wear. Yeah, with a little when they're growing lace, up, the with little, the little black shoes. <laughs> I was just like, Jermaine, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. We'll get back to the show. <clears throat> um, well, I mean, I don't have much more to say besides he performed 11 songs. He started with Caught Up, You Don't Have to Call, Superstar, Love in the Club, My Boo, Confessions, Burn. Don't skip over my boo. You Got well, It Bad, talk. Bad Girl, OMG, and Yeah. And we can go back to um, My Boo. Let's talk about the Alicia Keys. Let's talk about Alicia Keys now, and trying to find that note, and she couldn't <laughs> find it. <laughs> I love Alicia Keys down, right? She she is a great performer, and sometimes it happens during live performances where an artist, you know, they miss a note, they can't find it, I feel get something caught in their throat. Like, this ain't no tea, but I feel like Alicia Keys struggles performing live a lot. You did? Yeah. I feel like 
when I see her perform live, she struggles to find notes. Oh. Well, that's okay because they fixed it in the YouTube version. <laughs> they did. So if you if you're gonna go Google it to check on what we're talking about, yeah, you ain't gonna see it no, because they autocorrect that. You're probably gonna have to find look it up on TikTok because the NFL made sure she found the note. Right. <laughs> Um, I thought the halftime performance was really good. I thought Usher put on a great show. I was not disappointed by it. He did, he ran through the hits and he roller skated and he danced and he, he just put on a good show. Yeah. He also honored Black History Month by also including the Jackson State University Sonic Boom of the South Band, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a historically black college. Um, I wish they would have shown the band a little bit more. There was a lot happening. There was a lot happening. Including that stripper that apparently fell off the pole, and I just (laughs) thought it was part of the show. (laughs) I hope she's okay. I I don't think she got back up on the pole. And let's not say stripper because we don't know if she's really a stripper. Okay, one the of the pole performers dancers. that was doing the pole dancing part, which I'm sure yes. got everybody to complain to the FCC. I was mm-hmm. meaning to check on that to see how many complaints they got. Because anytime some simulation of a stripper on the Super Bowl calls for complaints to the FCC, um, she did bust her ass though. <laughs> she looked real scared when she fell too, didn't she? She did. I Again, there was so much going on in the background. I thought she was just sliding down the pole until like that TikTok po- that she just, pointed it out. She went like, real fast. She did. And the pole wasn't that long. So <laughs> There was also members of the Kappa Alpha Phi uh, Black fraternity that were dancing along uh, Usher with Usher during uh-huh. the performance. So he definitely brought out a lot. Uh, I too thought this, I thought it was good. I I was telling Sean, like the halftime shows, bringing it to the energy of a concert is hard to do in a live show. uh, That's time to like 13 minutes because you are just moving to the next before, by the time you start getting into like, yeah, that's my shit. You're moving on to the next song. Right. It's the, do they, they generally only have about 13 to 15 minutes. Well, they said this was the longest one at 13. Okay. Well, somebody must have been wrong about Michael because they say that his was longer. But maybe his was 13. I don't know. I, I was just know. going what I heard. Um, you could fact check me on that and tell me I'm wrong. But <laughs> I, I read somewhere that 13 was the longest Super Bowl. Okay. Well... Either way, I feel like you're right. You can't, it's hard to fit a concert into 13 minutes. Yeah. But, you know, I felt like he did a great job of giving the people what they wanted because a lot of people listening probably gonna only know his old stuff. Yeah. That, yeah, that, <laughs> that one. If you've been on a, any cruise line in the last, since that song came out, you have yeah. heard, yeah. Th- that is, uh, it's that the is staple. A, Staple on all cruise lines, <laughs> probably weddings, bar mitz, bar, bar mitzvahs. <laughs> use a special occasion that yeah song is coming on. He's still making money off that song. <laughs> he really is. I thought it was cool that he was uh, skating. Uh, people definitely got a little hot and moist when he took hot off his mo- shirt. His shirt. Um, but yeah. His new album is all right. So I couldn't find exactly how many people complained. I think it says here 1,300 complaint. Well, that was during the Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. <laughs> but Megan Kelly said she wasn't into the halftime show, but she, however, does appreciate that my kids haven't had anyone's vag exposed to them on screen as they innocently wait for the football to start. Hi, J-Lo and Shakira. Which I think is shade because there was no vagina show during that show either. Um, <clears throat> Just because he was a male, so there's no vagina showing. <laughs> and second of all, the type of outfit she's saying most females that have performed on the Super Bowl wear that same kind of silhouette. My thing with that whole thing is like they are performers and they're putting on a show. Nobody on that stage is naked. And you know, you know what you could do at halftime? 
You can go get some hot dogs, some and, chips. And press power that on your too. remote. And you that shit that is too. off. Right? Mm-hmm. Your kids don't have to watch the Super exactly. Bowl show. They don't. Or you just want to watch show. it. You just want to watch it to fucking complain. Right. Exactly. God gave you choices. And one of them is to turn that shit off. <sighs> Anyways. Uh, but I think somebody really distracted a good portion of the country. <laughs> I know. Um, I think this one person, as she sat there eating her chips as they panned to her in her box. I think we're thinking of the wrong person. I was thinking of Jennifer Lopez. I'm not thinking about Jennifer Lopez. I was making a joke. Anyway, oh, go okay. Ahead. Now I've done lost my train of thought. Anyways, <laughs> as she was sitting there so eloquently eating her chips at the beginning of this game, unbeknownst to the rest of the world, this person was about to drop some serious bombs on the Super Bowl. Well, this all started before the Super Bowl when Verizon tweeted a little snippet of a guy talking to the Renaissance horse. Mm-hmm. And then everybody was like, what is Beyonce doing with Verizon? We got to watch these commercials. Beyonce going to have her own Verizon plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everybody was like... It's a are they going collaboration? Right. Are they going to stream the Renaissance film on Verizon phones only? Like, what what is happening? Well, it was after halftime, right? It was after halftime. They right? let Usher have his shine. Beyonce wouldn't do that to Usher, and that's why she was sitting in that press in that box, <laughs> just eating her little chips. Like, ha, 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 she don't know what the fuck's about to happen. <laughs> um, the the commercial came. Swiftly after the Super Bowl, bitch, I wasn't even time. I wasn't paying attention to the screen, and I looked up, and I was like, "Oh, Beyonce's off." <laughs> yeah, and she was trying to break the internet of mm-hmm. Verizon's powerful five G. Apparently, cute commercial. Um, I've heard the opposite about Verizon, <laughs> but sure, girl. Um, it was a cute commercial. It was. Um, and then what did she say at the end? They ready? Drop the new music. They said they ready. Drop the new music. And can I tell you that people left their TV screens and went right to their phone screens and started boop, boop, Beyonce.com? I don't think half of the country (laughs) realized who won the game. Because after halftime and after that commercial, Twitter, Usher wasn't wasn't trending. Was not trending. Beyonce was trending. (laughs) Verizon was trending. On Twitter after the announcement. I don't think they could update the website fast enough. Because when I went to Beyonce.com, the only thing I saw was that the Renaissance film was going overseas. And I was like, this can't be what she's talking about. So as her people were trying (laughs) swiftly to upload everything onto every social network, (laughs) uh, fans were breaking the internet. Exactly what uh, Verizon wanted, I guess. Yes. Um, and we learned that act two of three is officially announced by Beyonce Knowles. Now, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what the fuck we're talking about, (laughs) Beyonce has been throwing hints left and right that something was happening. She changed her entire wardrobe. (laughs) Everything she's been to lately has been Western theme. People, Western thing. People call it country, but... We'll go Western thing. Western thing. Very chic uh, Western clothing. Yes. And uh, she been telling us. We were just kind of like, we don't know what's happening, but we feel like we kind of know. We should have known from the Grammys outfit, which mm-hmm. is the outfit that appeared on the website. Um, and she announced that Act 2 will be releasing on March 29th. And she gave us two songs. She gave us two songs off of the new album. Act, well, we don't know the name, dude. Do we? we don't. We just know that it's yeah. Act 2. We don't know that it's Renaissance Act 2 because Renaissance is just a, Act 1. Act 2 could be a completely different name. Yeah. Well, Beyonce has officially made everybody care, uh, sh- care <laughs> about uh, country music. <laughs> the- the way uh, we flipped the script to be like, I don't listen to country to uh, 16 carriages. 
<laughs> like people have switched their outfits. People out here buying cowboy hats and cowgirl hats. Beyonce gonna make us give a shit about country music. <laughs> she about to. Now here's the thing. Like I'm excited. I at first I was just like, oh, she's doing country. So like each act is going to be a different genre of music. We don't. I don't know that we know that entirely for sure. It looks like it's heading that way. Um, some people think that, that the whole thing won't be country, but you know, it's going to be a Western flavor throughout the album. I don't know. I mean, and there's parts where she is singing where you kind of lose a little bit of the country to it. Right. Uh, in those two songs, you kind of hear like traditional Beyonce. So it's going to be country Beyonce's way. I'm sure. And either way, I'm sure people are going to eat it up. People are already trying to get the songs requested on country radio. And country radio is like, we don't play Beyonce. And he was like, well, <laughs> bitch, she put out country songs. So maybe you should play them. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited for Act 2. Um, I love when artists take a risk and do something different. And I mean, Beyonce, if y'all didn't know, Miss Tina told us, her mama said that these songs are years old. Like Beyonce recorded both act one, two, and three from 2019 to 2022. So these can, songs. Can we just talk about how good her team is? At keeping secrets? Not, Fuck yeah. Not a single, single leak. leak of her shit. And. I mean, them NDAs must be like... You're going to die. If you leak this shit, your mama, your kids... Everybody's dead. They did. Everybody's (laughs) dead. (laughs) I mean, to know that three albums are recorded Mm -hmm. and not a single whiff of it, because this act two is not what people were thinking it would be. Right. There was a lot of speculation, but I don't know. Like, nothing from Beyonce's side has leaked no. and i feel like it's been that way since she dropped beyonce the, the the leak started when she started wearing more western clothes and she deleted everything off her instagram well she always gives a hint as to what's next like for lemonade she took a picture at a lemon tree just holding it mm-hmm. and i've i don't I remember that was a magazine cover or something but that was before lemonade was announced right. and I, she just always gives you I mean, a hint the renaissance horse hello yeah. It's been there this whole time. Uh, Wouldn't it be cool if they turned the horse then into a more of a Western horse now? I feel like that's what's going to happen. Because we, she basically took the disco ball hat. cowboy hat and it's just now just a regular cowboy yeah. hat. So get your coins ready. I'm sure there's a tour coming some, sometime I'm soon. Sure. Uh, there's rumors that she's going to do a residency at the Spear in Vegas. I could... I can see that more so for if it's going to be more of a driven country album. I can see that setting fitting. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I feel like Beyonce's so theatrical in her, especially after Renaissance. Oh, my God. You can't go back. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm ready for whatever she is going to give us. March 29th, she will drop Act Two. Uh, I enjoy both songs. Um, what is it? Hold 'em. Texas Hold'em. Texas Hold'em is kind of the more upbeat one. Uh, 16 Carriages is more of the ballady Ballad. one. But I, I, yes, I'm one of those that just doesn't really listen to too much country. I do love Carrie Underwood. Um, I don't know why just her, but <laughs> maybe it's because I watched Idol back in the day. Um, I like her, but beyond that, I haven't really gotten into the country music i don't really i don't know if it's because there's a familiar voice now you're like okay i can get into this <laughs> <laughs> now my spotify is like here here's some more country and i'm like no, no i didn't ask you for that didn't ask for it this is just <laughs> nah, this is the one time right here all right <laughs> <laughs> it's just the one time but this is not the first time beyonce has flirted with country music no um she did daddy lessons um, with the Dixie Chicks. What album was that? That was that was Lemonade. No, yeah, yeah, I it was Lemonade. It was lemonade yeah. Um, she performed at uh, the CMAs. Yeah, with the Dixie Chicks. Like everybody loves Daddy Lessons. It's a good song. It is a country song. Came into this world, 
Daddy's little girl. So if the album is gonna be like that, plus the two songs that we heard, I feel like this is still gonna be a well-rounded Beyonce album. I agree. I'm excited for it. I think it, it'll be fun. Uh, I don't know about going to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I hate. I don't hate Vegas. I just I'm not interested in it. You're just going to the sphere. Yeah, but everything's so damn expensive to get there. We'll figure it out. Anyways, please, <laughs> please go on tour, Beyonce, if you're listening. Can we talk about the other commercials? What other commercials? I had one I wanted to talk about, but tell me what you got, girl. Is it the Dunk Kings? No, it was not the Dunk Kings, but okay. go ahead. Well, that one was cute. It caught me by surprise. J-Lo and Ben have kind of, since they got back together, been in a Super Bowl commercial since then. Mm-hmm. This is not their first Dunkin' commercial either. No. That's what I meant. No, okay. Because <laughs> the commercial is usually about Duncan, because he's from Boston. Massachusetts. And home of Duncan. And so he's become like their unofficial mascot, kind of. Mm-hmm. And uh, we added Tom Brady this time and Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Because that's his best day. Three white boys and a Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a cute commercial, though. It was cute. I thought it was cute, too. And, you know, JLo's. A great actress, so she made it work. And Duncan sold out of those outfits. Duncan sold out of his merch. <laughs> they have a whole separate menu for this now at Dunkin' Donuts. It was cute. Uh, they have, what is it? Uh, Munchkin kebabs. I want to get oh, one yeah, just for the hell of it. Oh, another thing about the Verizon commercial. Now, I heard that Beyonce got paid $30 million to do it. Okay. Which so that a was a very expensive commercial because <laughs> it cost like, I don't know how many millions to put a commercial. And that was a 60 second. That was not a 15 <laughs> seconds. That was a full 60 second freaking commercial. Oh, and Honey Bun and Sierra was in it. That was yeah. Cute. Beyond that, I don't think any other commercial stood out to me. Um, There were a couple, but like nothing worth mentioning. I thought the commercials were very meh. Mm-hmm. This year. Uh. Well, there was another commercial that came about that's <laughs> called He Gets Us. Oh, the He Gets Us campaign. And they are not new to the Super Bowl. Or this podcast. Or this podcast. <laughs> uh, we talked about it last year. Uh, I figured this would be our LGBTQ moment of our pod. Oh, Lord. Um, because this particular organization, even though they are trying to come off as uh, love for Jesus, Mm -hmm. uh, the organization has connections to anti-LGBTQ and anti-abortion laws. Of course they do. (laughs) Some of the campaign donors or major donors and its holding companies have ties to conservative political aims and far-right ideologies that appear at odds with the campaign's inclusive messaging. Shocked. Hobby Lobby is one of them. Oh, Lord. And if you know Hobby Lobby, you may love to shop there. But they they are definitely anti a lot of things because of their religion. Most corporations are. So... I just bring them up for awareness because they are just pulling, uh, what is that thing called? A veil. Mm -hmm. Sheep over. Wool over your eyes? Sure, we'll go with that one. Okay. (laughs) Um, They they are just not really the inclusive messaging that they are trying to portray to people. And it's even more disturbing that they're using religion— as the catalyst for them to show how uh, we should believe more in Jesus and blah, blah, blah. But you're being funded by organizations that are the opposite of what you're saying Jesus was. Pretends to be shocked. I know. Because I'm not. (laughs) This was a part of a $100 million media investment they are doing. So they spent 20, about roughly $20 million on two ads for the Super Bowl. The campaign is um, portraying the pivotal figure of Christianity as an immigrant, a refugee, 
a radical, an activist for women's rights, and a warrior against racial injustices and political corruption. That is the theme of their campaign. Mm. And then can I go back to where it says the campaign has connections to (laughs) anti-LGBTQ, anti-abortion laws, and politicians that don't believe in immigration. Can I just, I don't got much more to say than that. I mean, hypocrisy is not anything new for the church. Um, And I'm not trying to speak that holistically. Like, I know that there are churches out there that are accepting of the community. Absolutely. But this one is like one of those mega churches with a bunch of rich donors behind it. And y'all could have taken that money and did something for the homeless, did something for, um, I don't know, poor families. Like, there's a lot of ways that y'all could have used that money instead of running an ad during the Super Bowl. It, $20 million would feed I don't know how many people. It may remove I don't know how many people off the streets if you gave them uh, temporary housing. Uh, 20 million, 20, hell, go for their bigger media money, which is $100 million. I, I, I don't have anything to say. Because they, they're going to do it again next year. Um, it's just going to continue to be an ad that shows up in the Super Bowl. I promise not to bring it up next year. (laughs) (laughs) Unless the commercial is really bad. (laughs) But I just bring it up for awareness because, you know, I'm not anti-religion for those who seek that and believe in that. Uh, But I really find it troublesome when we, like our country now, uses religion as the basis of fear or uses the face of religion to say, Jesus was this, 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 come join us. And then the people funding that are actually the opposite of what we're saying Jesus was. So we're using the face of Jesus to attract you. But meanwhile, behind it, we're doing the opposite to the communities that we say Jesus wants and welcoming. And the interesting part of these campaigns is they touch specifically are trying to gain Uh, acceptance from the younger people Mm -hmm. and people who um, have or question religion. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I I just feel like, again, if you are a practicing whatever your religion is, that's fine. Um, I just, it's to me, it's another way of indoctrination in this country where we try to make Christianity the it religion, like evangelical, because that's specifically the 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 Christianity they are leaning on is the evangelical one. That's cute, which is typically more conservative leaning. Mm-hmm. And those are the same ones that propped up Trump and were praying on that man. And was like, mm, I don't know about that one. I wouldn't put my hand on the Bible for him. Um, <laughs> it's just another way of indoctrination. It's religion has always and probably will always be a catalyst for disruption, a catalyst for sowing dis- divisiveness between people in this country because a certain group of people believe their religion is the only religion. And if you practice anything else or you believe in any other God, then you are wrong and you are going to hell and you're going to burn. Um, If you are gay, if you are an unwed mother, like so many things to just make you feel like crap. And at the same time, like these, I I do not believe that these are the teachings of Jesus Christ. No, but that's just my opinion. No, and uh, you know, none of us really know what are the teachings. But no, we don't. Um, you know, people choose to make whatever they think. I mean, they take passages out of the Bible to and twist them to that part always kills me because y'all will read Leviticus down and be like, man should not sleep with another man. And yet y'all skip the rest of the scriptures that are in there 
where it's like you shouldn't wear clothes made out of um, more than one material. You shouldn't eat shellfish. You shouldn't have sex with a woman when she's on oh, her period. Like y'all skip all of those things. I know. Happy Ash Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry. Happy Lent season. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great Lent uh, leading conversation. Well, I just wanted to bring that up because it, it, it just annoys me. And and one last thing on the Super Bowl. We all know about the controversy of um, Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> she was the one supposed to be disrupting the Super Bowl, but it was Beyonce instead. <laughs> um, but if, if you don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen to episode 62. Three. The, the what are we? This is sixty-three. Sixty-three, where we talk all about it. But I saw a quick article on the New York Times that said uh, the Taylor Swift conspiracy theory embraced by nearly one in five Americans mm-hmm. was a result of a recent poll finding. Seventy-one percent of people who believe the government is using Taylor Swift to help Biden. Were Republican. <laughs> and 83% of those who embraced the baseless theory said they were they were likely to vote for Donald Trump. Okay. So who's leading the conspiracy? I, 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 conspiracy theories, I just I don't understand. I don't understand how people uh, well, let me rephrase. I do understand how some people can be. I want to say brainwashed, but I don't know if that's too strong of a word. Indoctrinated. Sure. To believe certain things. But then I'm like, do you not have your own mind? Do you not have common sense? So you think that Pizzagate thing where they thought Democrats were keeping kids underneath a pizza (laughs) Rhea um, and sex trafficking them? Like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And it's the, 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 the poll is even more disturbing. And to, to think that Taylor Swift, of all people, is a government agent that works for the Pentagon and was somehow going to be able to manipulate the Super Bowl so that the Chiefs win and that she would announce her, and put her power behind Biden and Harris and Look, to get her. I don't understand. She was just trying people. to come support her man and That's go, it. get back on this private jet because she got more shows to do. The checks keep rolled. Right. You know? I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I feel like y'all have more things to worry about. Like, y'all sitting here complaining about Biden being old and forgetful. Meanwhile, this man over here is out here telling people he had the best memory era, but he don't recall anything. Mm, and telling Russia to do things with our Y'all got your own issues. Issue. Stop worrying anyway. about Taylor Swift. Stop worrying about Taylor Swift. She's going to be all right. I'm she putting out an album. She putting out a new album. It's going to be about her love. Anyways. Leave that girl alone. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but leave Taylor alone. <laughs> yeah, Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> he put out an album, too. <laughs> he did put out an album. I only knew that this is random. I, I was looking at the top 50 uh, charts and I'm like, what the f- <laughs> fuck is Kanye West doing the first ten <laughs> positions? And I'm like, is this new? I go look at him like, oh yeah, it was new. <laughs> so um, good for you, uh, Kanye. <laughs> Inside um, dollar sign. Sh- yeah. And with that, we're just gonna go into what's your issue. <laughs> So, what's up? What, what you got going on in the Muy issues bueno. today? Muy bueno. <laughs> it reminds me of that girl. We're, we, we're watching 90. Wait, what is it called? Married at First Married Sight. Married at First Sight. <laughs> this girl got married to some Spanish boy, and that just made me think of her when she's trying to speak Spanish. Okay. <laughs> um, I wasn't really sure what my issue was going to be this week. He says it all. So I'm like, yeah, I, I know that you mentioned that show that brings to mind that other show that we're watching, The Thruple Show. Oh, yes. Okay. So if you haven't started watching this. This could be a good continuation from our last episode. It could be because y'all ask us about being in The Thruple so much. Um, I think it's Couple to Thruple on Peacock. Um, Peacock. Peacock is free. So go watch <laughs> it if you want. 
So it's basically, I think, one, two, three, four, four couples. Sure. And they are in this luxurious resort and they get to try Which, out. Hold up. This luxurious resort, right? Yeah. All we see is the pool area and then the rooms. Like, where the fuck is the rest of this house? Um, is it fake? No, the rest of the house is for staff. And <laughs> oh, I'm like, why don't we just sit in the living room? No, we all got to sit in the room. Anyways, go ahead, babe. So this show is interesting, right? Because they have singles um, that the couples can choose from. And basically, the point of the show is to see if adding a third person to your relationship is going to work for you. Um it is a good concept of a show and it's good to show polyamory in a somewhat positive light. The thing that I don't like about the show. Uh, oh, you hit. Sorry. Oh, Another positive thing about the show is they actually have an expert. Um, I don't want to call her a sex therapist, but she's like a relationship therapist and she helps them by doing different like sit down activities with them and kind of helps them learn about their own relationship. All fine and good and fine. The thing that I don't like about this is that bringing a third person into your relationship isn't just like, hey, I met this dude on the street I and Let's go. he's going to come to the house and he's, bam, he's here. The, because the way it happens in the show is like they pick a single, that single comes back to the room with them I feel like there should be an in-between there. Like, they should be getting to know this person. They should be spending time with them, learning their likes and dislikes. And Because I feel like the first night just led to sex. For some of them, yes. Yeah. Like, and, and that's just, like I said, that's just the friends with the benefit. Right. Like, At that point, you're just having a threesome. And not to say that something can't grow from that because people have had, like, yeah. one-night stands and it actually turns into a relationship. Yeah. But... I just feel like the speed of this show is not giving them an actual opportunity. No, they may they may all leave from there like this is not for me, but didn't approach it the correct way. Right, right, and that's the that's that's the part that I, it's an entertaining show. It's Don't get me very wrong, entertaining. And if you're open. You know, to life. Yeah. And watch it. If you're not, don't turn it on. Yeah, I mean, because there's representation. There is gay people, there is bi people, mm -hmm. there's pan people, there's black people, <laughs> there is there's Latinos, okay, uh, um, Indian, like representations in the show. It is. And they're all at different stages. Like some have been dating for three years. Some are married. Some are married. Uh, some are dating. So there's different perspectives. So but I too I do I do agree with you. It it's a little too fast. Like we just got here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just met the couples, and then now that night, you're telling me to pick one. Right. And it's like, wait, what? I, it, to me, it's not fair to the single person either, because though they've only been with these people for a short while, they also have the opportunity to switch to a different single. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but feel that person has to take that a little bit personally. And that single still remains in the house. Yeah. Even if they get overlooked. Yeah. So I mean, it's a little wild. The other thing I have noticed is I think it's working for the couples. They're realizing things yes. that they might need to work on before they get to that. But in 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 to touch on your point is that's a that's gonna affect the singles because their emotions are the ones getting hit. these are people too. Yeah. That is all I'm saying. Um so yeah, that was my made up issue, issue. Mm -hmm. um second one i'm gonna briefly talk about ariana grande and mariah carey so i already put out a new single right um, no it's not new it's a remix i'm just i'm just talking about the song in general oh, oh <laughs> i hope i have time for my issue too go ahead okay whatever the song is called um <laughs> yes what? and yes and um Question cute mark. song cute single it took a minute for me to warm up to it but cute whatever so mariah is a, a, a big inspiration for her beyonce Shh. did house and now everybody wants to do house I didn't want to say that <laughs> um <laughs> but i guess drake did it first it just didn't go nowhere <laughs> girl nobody can anyway i mean the name of the album was honestly never mind yeah <laughs> anyway um so 
I love Ari. I love Mariah. I just feel like this song with them together wasn't necessary. I would have loved Mariah to have been on a different song with Ariana. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, and part of it, I was like, is that, is that, is she singing there? Right. Yeah. That she's singing right there. Yeah. I just, it should have because been because Ari was out, and it's one of those remixes where we talk about it. it's like it wasn't written as a feature song, it was remixed. Right. So we're laying over the voice. Ari's already in a high octave in the chorus, yeah. So Mariah had to come in in a lower the octave. The distinctive, their, their voices are very similar in some ways, and it's just hard to pick who's who yeah, at times. You're really flirting with your mic today, Leave just alone. keep hitting it. Go ahead. What's your issue? Do I have time? Jesus. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge Puerto Rican representation at the Super Bowl. We got Isaiah Pacheco, uh, who is from the Kansas City Chiefs. He's running back. Uh, he draped himself with the Puerto Rican flag on Sunday night uh, to celebrate the team's third Super Bowl victory. Um, last year at the Super Bowl, Pacheco wore a helmet featuring the iconic um, flag on his helmet, the Puerto Rican flag, uh, which now that helmet lies in the NFL Hall of Fame. Um, so I'm happy to see representation. He even said it on the NFL Network. He's like, I got to represent, man. You don't get too many Puerto Ricans doing this thing. <laughs> you always got to represent your culture and i say that because some people tell me to just be an american <laughs> <laughs> but that was my thing uh i'm proud to see not one but two puerto ricans were in the game uh john feliciano was on the 49 49ers he's an offensive lineman uh lineman from uh, the 49ers football team so there was two puerto ricans in the uh, in the Super Bowl. So hats off to my people. The flag's back there if you're watching it on TV. Um, and I got to say, I re-listened to Usher's new album. First, first round, did not enjoy. Uh, second round, okay, I got a little bit more into it. Some of my standout tracks are Coming Home, uh, which is featuring Burna Boy. Burna Boy, mm -hmm. what did I say? So it's got like a reggae feel to it. Mm -hmm. Really enjoyed that. Uh, good, good, ruin, and Marja, Margella, Margella. I love good, good. I love good, good. Um, the other song he has with Lotto. Mm, that's all right. Um, and a couple of other tracks. It is a long album. It, you know me. If it's over twelve songs, I'm looking at you funny. <laughs> and it was twenty songs, and one which is a. Uh, soundtrack song from the color purple and i was like what is that yeah happening? that should have been at the end why was that in the dead middle of an album we went it was from so like strange we went from like i'm gonna strip you down and do things to you to the color purple and i'm like I'm is like, this the end of the album and then another song came i'm like that was not the end of the album yeah i'm not i'm not sure what was happening there i love that arrangement of the color uh, of the song from the color purple with yeah him and her <laughs> get it him and her anyways no actually her the performer Got um, it. <laughs> they might not know. Uh, I thought it was cute. But it's a good album. It's just not. It's good. It's just like, I feel like I can just take like the songs I like and put them in a playlist. And mm -hmm. that would be just, like my short be album. Your EP. Yeah. The Sean. <laughs> the Usher EP made by Sean. Listen, I, I love music. I love artists, certain artists, but like, don't give me. 20 songs to listen to. Just, mm. Speaking of new artists, our new music, Jennifer Lopez released her new album this how today. How many tracks are there? This Is Me Now. I forgot how many it was. <laughs> uh, and it also co coincides with an Amazon special. Uh, so, And she announced her tour uh, that starts this summer in Orlando, Florida, of all places. Ooh, are you going? I am probably going to go because... She's not a tour person, so I'm shocked she's doing another one. Um, it, but I want to go, if it's in Orlando and it's opening night, I kind of want to go to opening night because, you know, see it first and get all the videos <laughs> and everybody's going to be watching my TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> and then I may go when she comes back to Tampa and then I'll sit really high for that one. Okay. Weird tour. She starts here in June in Orlando, comes back to Tampa in like August. 
the schedule. Not a good planning of whoever did that. <laughs> Anyways, that's going to bring us to the end of episode 65 of the Manny and Sean Experience podcast with video exclusively streaming on Spotify. Yay. Yay. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, as Sean said at the top of the show, we appreciate everyone uh, continuously listening, watching, doing all the, things. all the things. We appreciate that. We hope that uh, you'll be so inclined to share us with your family, friends, your social happenings, uh, because that is the easiest and free way to support <laughs> our show. Um, so we would highly appreciate that. Yes. Um, you can find us on all of our socials, all of the ones, you know, M-A-S-X-P-23. Um, you can email us if you have any questions, comments, or want to collab at mannyandshawn at gmail.com. M-A-N-N-Y-A-N-D-S-H-A-W-N at gmail. And don't forget to write. <laughs> don't forget to write and review. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're supposed to say? Mm-hmm. Don't forget to write and review our show, uh, which again is the quickest and free way to support this show. And that helps us kind of go up in the algorithms of the world. Yes. If you made it this far in the episode and you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, could you please go write us a review? Pretty please. We would love it. And don't forget, we have our Amtrak First Timers Guide on YouTube. Uh, and then we're going to release a bright line, which is local to Florida. By the time you hear this, it should be out. It will be out, yes, because <laughs> yeah, it's going to be out. Uh, you can find our YouTube as well, as Sean said, by MASXP23. Please subscribe there as well. Uh, as we said, YouTube is going to become kind of our adventure blogs, less podcasty. But you'll still catch podcast clips on our shorts. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful day. We hope we brought you some laughs um, with some seriousness and then some laughs again. And maybe you'll want to go listen to Usher's new album. Or say, this ain't Texas. <laughs> ain't no hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Going down, 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 down. All right. Anyways, bye-bye, everybody. As we like to say here on the Manny and Sean Experience. Do something good. For yourself. And then do something good for someone else. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Take care. Hear you. Listen. Watch on the next one. The King Rap. Boom.